Sin, Salvation, Service. The Heidelberg Catechism lays out a three-part view of the Christian life as we understand our sin and misery, as we recognize the blessing of God delivering us from our sin and misery, we then respond by living a life of thankful service. The third part of the Heidelberg Catechism helps us understand better what it means for us to live in response to what God has done for us. Lord's Day 33, question and answer 88. What is involved in genuine repentance or conversion? Two things, the dying away of the old self and the coming to life of the new. Question and answer 89. What is the dying away of the old self? Answer, it is to be genuinely sorry for sin, to hate it more and more, and to run away from it. Question and answer 90. What is the coming to life of the new self? It is wholehearted joy in God through Christ and a delight to do every kind of good as God wants us to do. Question and answer 91. What do we do that is good? Answer, only that which arises out of true faith, conforms to God's law, and is done for his glory, and not that which is based on what we think is right or on established human tradition. The Christian faith teaches that we have been delivered from our misery by God's grace alone through Christ, and not because we've earned it. But this does not mean that the Christian life is no more than pious reflection at appropriate moments about Jesus, the cross, our baptism, and the Lord's Supper. Genuine repentance and conversion ought to characterize the person who has been saved by the work of Jesus Christ. Now, one challenge for some of us is that we think of repentance and conversion as words that primarily apply to others, not to us, at least those who have been part of the Christian faith for a long time. Conversion is what happens to drug dealers, convicted murderers, and perhaps to telephone salesmen who prey on the life savings of unsuspecting seniors. But for many Christians, we think that good people don't need conversion or at least that's the way it is in our mind. The, this portion of the Catechism reminds us, though, that the Christian life ought to be marked by consistent, continual progress in the things of God. Each one of us has an old self that needs to be put to death. One of the texts the Catechism cites is from David. Now, David authored half the Psalms, and yet he recognized his own shortcomings in Psalm 51, where he says, My sin is always before me. In other words, we don't need to commit adultery or steal from the grocery store to need repentance. Maybe we struggle with anger at our kids, our teachers, our friends, our spouse. We tell ourselves, well, if they just change this or that in order to justify our behavior, but deep down we have to admit that we're as much of a problem as the other person is. Or perhaps we could talk about our sense of entitlement, grades, the treatment we get from customers or we get as customers. We think about government programs that we think we deserve things and when we get upset when we don't get what we think we deserve. The dying away of the old self is contrasted with the coming to life of the new. As the Spirit of Christ gets a hold of us, what we ought to see is not just a grudging admission that we could do better, but a real joy at doing what's right and fair and just. But in case we commit, confuse the Christian life with a humanitarian vision for the world, the Catechism emphasizes that the good we do must be done for God's glory. As the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Christians not only have the calling to make a difference in the world, but to be different in the way that we make a difference. We'll examine that more in the coming weeks as we reflect on some of the specific ways the Christian life is marked by consistent, continual progress toward holiness through the work of Jesus Christ within us.